Hey guys, this is Mark with NC Engravers and we have an interesting M&P 2.0 10 millimeter build here tonight with the front serrations. This is going to be interesting not only because it's a 10 millimeter, but also because it is one of the first front serration model slides we've had here. So we've had a couple of the, the front serration model slides. We've done some real basic work on them. I think this one's going to be quite a bit more advanced. Going to be very interesting once again because it's a 10 millimeter and because we have not only slide, but we have barrel work also. So let's jump into what we know we want to accomplish and then we're going to talk about some of the options of what we may also move into we don't 100 percent know with this being such a unique slide being the 10 mil and being the front serration model this is going to be very much a change the design as you go so we're going to start with some sort of a basic pattern and we're going to build off of that as we go which no doubt makes that hard to explain what we're doing and the direction we're taking at the beginning because we don't 100 percent know what we're going to be doing. So let's talk about what we know. We're gonna be doing the hive pattern on the top of this slide. Now, this is not gonna be the standard hive pattern you guys have seen before. It's obviously gonna take place between the front sight and where the barrel locks up, 10 millimeter. We wanna leave a nice amount of meat left over right in this zone, and we wanna make sure that we leave enough material left over in the front in the event that the front sight is replaced with something else, so that way the front iron sight does not hang over the hole. Now, one of the things that makes this a little bit more interesting with the hive on the top is that we're going to be porting the factory barrel to align with the portholes on the top of the slide. So very interesting idea. No doubt it's going to have to be a different design in order for that to function correctly. <clears throat> so hive top, ported barrel. This guy's going to go inside of the slide, of course. Where we have an opening on the slide, we'll have some slot cuts in the barrel. This will be done with the laser. We're going to show you guys that work as well. We're going to be doing our Cobra nose on the front. Now, one of the other things that the customer has brought to my attention is that there's a lot of creative freedom in this build. If there's something that I feel like doing, if there's a direction I feel like going, this is the, the best time to do that. Now, what that means is I have debated and just thought about the process of shaving these sides down and doing some sort of a side window, a cleanup. We do want weight reduction. This guy is, is fairly heavy. We don't want to compromise any recoil uh, issues that we may cause by uh, you know reducing the weight of the slide. So hopefully by porting the barrel, we're going to be seeing recoil reduction. We're also going to be seeing weight reduction on the slide. That's one of the reasons why this is such an interesting video because it's really going to be catered to the, the people that are after the 10 millimeter and it may just function a little bit better than you're hoping it does now not that there's anything wrong with it now but we're always after some sort of an upgrade or an improvement one of the things i want to take note of here before we uh, move into the cut work is the m p slides themselves seem to be fairly decent quality once again this is one of the first uh front serration models we've seen i want to i want to point out one thing here um, and that is this flat zone right here. If you guys take a look at this, so you can, you can see these serrations. You see this flat right here, okay? And basically there's a last curl and there's a flat zone. And we flip it over and it's much thinner over here. So I don't know if you guys noticed that, but this right here, this flat right here, isn't nowhere near as thick as this one. Once again, you can see it there and you can see it here, right there. So the idea here um, that I'm pointing out is if we do decide to go with something like a side window, it's not always just so easy to shave the side and do something. Sometimes we're working around flaws from the manufacturer that we have to work around. We've talked about this in some of the other ones. Sometimes difference in engraving depth, that they're not always the same. They're not in the same location in some, uh, some circumstances and on some pistols. So we're going to do our best. If we do decide to shave the side of that slide down, we're going to do our best to make it align on both sides, make it look correct on both sides, even though that's not exactly what we're what we're seeing here from the manufacturer. So we're going to do our best to straighten that out. Now, one of the other things about the barrel is we are going to be, once again, porting it somewhere up in this zone, and then we're going to be polishing it. I think it's going to be a nice uh, choice of finish for polish. You can see the wear on the black nitride that's here. You can see the drag lines on the side as I roll this right here. So that means that this is rubbing inside of the slide on what would be the the round edge over here right right on this this side right here and of course we're seeing that over here as well if you look real carefully and get you back into focus you can see that right there there's a line 
So it's kind of one of those deals where I do think that the polishing is going to assist with ease of use as far as a less drag. Um, it's also going to keep the barrel looking better longer because it's not going to be wearing another black nitride or a different coating off the barrel as there won't actually be a coating on the barrel. Now one of the things I can say is that it really doesn't look like this barrel has been shot all that much so to start seeing that much wear uh, right up front on a pistol that doesn't have that much age on it it can kind of be somewhat concerning and it is nice that we do offer black nitride to go back to a little bit more durable finish which is exactly what we're doing on this slide so once the cutwork's been done in the slide the slide will go back out for ni black nitride and the barrel will be polished guys at this time since we don't really know 100 percent what else we're doing we're going to jump into the work we're going to start that work we're going to start turning it out if it looks like we're taking another direction or something that's really complicated that maybe you won't understand that what's going on, I'll stop it, I'll explain it, and then we'll move forward. Otherwise, we may just jump right into some side cutting work if it seems like it's logical, if it seems like it's pretty straightforward. And um, guys, at this time, let's, ju let's jump into the work and see how it comes out. All right, guys, let's take a look and see exactly how this came out now that we've completed the work. It's gone to black nitride. It's come back. We have that factory coating put back on the slide. I want to just slow down for a moment. I want to make a comment, and then I want to move forward. Guys, keep in mind that when a process like this unfolds, you're literally seeing it unfold minute by minute as the video is played, as the, the entire project from beginning to end is uh, unraveled. But for us here, things take a lot longer. So... When we start a video, we give you our mindset, we start working on it, we may do some cut work, we may end up waiting on standby for a batch of black nitride, it may go to black nitride, come back. A lot of that is what we had seen here in this exact build. So, you know, we've done some work, it was sent out, we had to wait for it to come back, for us to process it, we processed the barrel in kind of in the mix there. So it's one of those things that our mindset and our, our logic behind a project does change because of the time is slowly evolved instead of instantaneous as it's as it's exposed in this video. So with that being said, guys, um, let's talk about it. I do want to talk about the sides, uh, give you my opinion. I want to go into the barrel and I want to go into some of that stuff. I want to just kind of give you the, the overall feeling of this. So first and foremost, we did the hive on the top, right? We ended up doing a triple window on the top, which was opened up into a single window. Of course, we ported a barrel. You guys had the opportunity to see that. So these are things um, that was kind of what you had already seen in the video. And um, we did a standard Cobra nose. Uh, aside from that, we really just processed the slide to match the barrel, and then we, we sent the slide out for black nitride. So what I wanna do is I wanna jump into the barrel, and then I wanna come back to the slide. I wanna talk to you about those sides a little bit more. Um, once again, we don't have a rear plate here, so uh, it does take a plate in order to put an optic on here. This is what it would, something like this would look like with an optic on it. Once again, I'm just, I'm just kinda uh, giving you a little bit more visualization here so you kinda have a little bit more of a picture and I, maybe I'll add a couple pictures of, of it just kinda setting on there. Um, as far as the barrel goes, I'm gonna put this down here. As far as the barrel goes, I really like the barrel work that was done and I say that because one, we stripped off the existing coating uh, there's no drag. So if you guys had seen it in the beginning, which we had already displayed, you know, there's there's drag lines, there's wear lines, there's rub points. You know, we're still going to see that stuff uh, between the slide and the barrel. Right? Those rubbed areas, they're, they're not going to go away. But one of the things that is just going to overall unfold a little bit better is that we're not going to see those drag lines because you're literally just going to be polishing a polished surface and it's just gonna get better over time, right? So uh, I think that that's a, a really good choice. I also think it's an opportunity to make the barrel stand out from the slide, right? Because we don't want them both to be the same color. We do want some side, some kind of an offset between the two. We did a triple port on the top here. We spaced them out accordingly. Uh, you know, it's kind of one of those deals with it being a 10 millimeter. We don't want the ports to be really close together. We do want it to overline and match the pattern. So there's only so much we can do when we're dealing with the hive. Okay, so if you're doing a single top window, we got options. We're doing some sort of, uh, you know, wave cut that you guys have seen or a ray cut. 
you know, we've got different layouts and different patterns on, that would have to go on the barrel in order to match the slide. So this happens to be the one that we ended up going with that would match the hive with the barrel. Overall, I think it's really nice. So let's just take a look and see what that looks like. And then I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the, the size. I will say, you know, one of the things I want to say about this, this barrel um, is was really tight going into here. And I noticed that when I was going through the process of just getting everything prepped out, you know, for black nitride, I was like, man, this thing really is tight. So if you happen to have one of these, just a fa good old factory slide, I'm going to tell you already that this barrel um, isn't really tight when it's in, it's just tight going in. So it's got to, it's obviously something to do with the way that this, this maneuvers, you know, in here, it's got to go in at an angle and then it kind of slips back up in there. Um, but it's one of those deals where it's, it's very tight when it's not polished. So now that it's polished, it's like, it, it's super easy going in and out, which obviously is going to be better for functionality. So um, overall, I really like the way that it looks. So you guys can you guys can actually see the porting. We'll add some pictures here. So hive on the top. We end up doing the porting that matches the whole whole whole. So obviously downrange, we'd be you know looking something like this. I really do like it. I think we're going to see not too much pressure loss, right? So we don't want to give up the 10 millimeter. But I do think that we're going to see the correct amount of uh, pressure reduction in order to you know get that muzzle down instead of getting that really snappy back kind of back at your face kind of feel like we do see with a lot of the uh the, the faster rounds like the 10 millimeter we see that um they're kind of snappy sometimes so with that being said uh, i do think that we're going to achieve that cobra nose it's a nice look over there on the end i really like that guys what i'm going to do now is i'm going to slip this barrel out of here and just set it aside i don't want to drop it and what i do want to tell you is i want to talk about the sides i know in the beginning of the video we talked about the sides we talked about the serrations we talked about the flat zone here and how they're a little different on each side which i'm going to be honest with you it looks way better now that it's been black nitride coated it doesn't stand out as much on that flat zone there you know i sat there i did the hive once again things have to unfold everything's a stepping stone right so we're going to do the top then we're going to do the cobra nose then we got to figure out how the barrel's going to work and we got to figure out if we're going to do a side window how does it lay with the top how does it affect the top and how does it match the top right so these are all things that we have to look at and go should it be done can it be done correctly or is it just being done those are those are two different things and then you know is it going to look right you know and one of the things that just kept coming to mind over and over and over again was um, and I'm not speaking of the 10 millimeter. I'm just speaking of the design of the M&P 2.0. And that is if the new model is a front serration model, it's got the serrations up here and we take them off to do a design. Why didn't, and I'm, once again, I'm not speaking of this project, but why wouldn't we have done that to a Gen 1? Why wouldn't we have done that to a Gen 2, but not a front serration model? And the point being made is at this point in time, we would be removing one of the key features to a new design to add a new pattern but then it kind of takes away from why did we buy the front serration model to begin with, right? So I'm, I, you know, and I, I trust me, guys, I get it. The 10 millimeter was was a a long. Uh, it was a it was a design that came out much after the, the original Gen ones and the Gen twos. I I 100% I get where the mindset is there, and you're like, dude, they didn't make a Gen 110, you know. So I I get what you're saying. The point I'm saying about it is is that the thought process behind it is we're stripping off one of the newest features on one of the newest released slides to do our own and i kind of, I kind of sort of feel like we're taken away from from the gun itself you know and I, I know it sounds odd to say that but i've said it in pattern you know in videos before about patterns and that is you know are we creating a pattern to work around an existing tool mark on a slide or are we stripping it off and are we creating our own design and you know those are two different types of people one is i really can't work around an existing design so i'm going to strip it off i'm going to do my own and i'm going to be honest with you some of them look beautiful but there's the other person who says i can create something around something that's already here and i can work with all the people one's kind of like a team player and one's like i'm not a team player i'm just the team and you know it's okay to have that mentality in both directions because they're both very accurate at what they do usually we see the individual that excels to the top says i don't need a team I'm, I'm i am the team and those guys are usually really good however sometimes they lack when they're put next to an individual who's like no we have to do this together because there's a piece of this puzzle that only i can do and sometimes that one individual uh doesn't play nice and that's kind of where i'm getting at is you know if we just shave this off we're just being the team and not a team player 
And I really just didn't see a nice way of removing the text here and doing a window without going into this, right? This side's not so bad. We've got some room. We could we could have easily done a pocket here, or, you know, recess step down, or maybe a little window here. But over here, we really wouldn't have seen much of a step down unless we were going all the way into the ejection area and, and just trying to make it look right. I just didn't see it, you know. I'm not saying I won't. I'm not saying I won't see an example and want to, you know, revisit or realter that. I'm just I'm just simply saying with the design on the top, with the barrel, with the Cobra nose, I wasn't seeing it, right? And as far as a vision goes, I want things to be complete. I don't want to, I don't want to do a, a section of the puzzle and be like, yeah, I did the puzzle. No, I want to do the whole puzzle. And I want to make sure that if I've got to work around key elements that are already here, that they're done correctly. Guys, I know we're getting off path. I know I'm sorry about that. I'm kind of ranting and raving on. We, we haven't done any videos in a long time. And it, you know me, I'll just talk and talk. So with that being said, guys, follow along. If you like the content, feel free to subscribe. Bear reporting. I know what's going on in your mind right now. I want to get my bear reported. I asked this guy and he said he wouldn't do it. And now he did one. Guys, on occasion, on a full project, something I'm interested in, okay, I'm going to say that politely, I'll probably do barrel porting, right? We've done barrel porting before. Of course, this is, a, this is an example here. But we start getting into, hey, I just want my barrel ported to match a slide I already have. It, we, we just don't do it, right? Go buy a barrel that's already ported that matches the hole. Buy a barrel that's already ported. We'll cut a hole to match the barrel. You know, those are different than just us porting a barrel. You know, hey, I want to get my barrel ported because I want it to fit my slide I already have. That's It's just not how we work. We, we don't do that. Um, if we were going to do that, we would be selling a part and you just, you'd just be buying a part and you'd be working around whatever problem you have when you get that part. That's not really us. If we have the opportunity to do a window, to do a barrel and to do a full project, that, that, that may be us. Okay. That's a little different. Um, so with that being said, a lot of times, you know, you use those gentle words of like, Mark, just do your thing. And you're probably going to hear a lot more of what you want to hear than I want a port here. I want it spaced like this and I want it cut at this thing. I don't want it, you know, done like this just stop there <laughs> you know we're not that's not what we're in business for and it would take me too long to do exactly what you're wanting to have done you give me a little creative freedom and we're probably going to turn something out uh that you know is probably a little more attractive probably a little bit more flowing between the two pieces and ultimately and overall probably just looks a little bit better facebook instagram follow along leave a comment you, you like it you don't like it you know, we'll hear it in all directions. Just kind of give us that feel of, of what you're after. Uh, once again, the M&Ps, uh, the new models, the front serration models, they are a beautiful uh, slide as a whole. I'm not sure I would change a lot to them. You know, if you didn't want to do the hive, you could just do a single top window and a port of barrel, do a Cobra nose. I mean, there's some, there's some small things that you could do to keep those features on the gun. Uh, just, you know, at least for now, at least keep them on the gun until something crazy comes out and I go wild and build something else. Um, but with that being said, guys, if you need anything, feel free to let us know. We do have a contacts tab on the webpage. We would encourage you to use that to contact us. We're just, we are busy. Um, you know, we do slow down in the summer months, but you know, usually this is the kind of stuff that we're working on. You guys are going to see that in the next couple of builds. We've got a little bit more unique stuff coming up. Uh, so with that being said, stay tuned and uh, we'll just kind of see what happens.